What's up guys? Today we're gonna look at the new IBO grunt suit, the Sheedon. And I really, really dig the design of this suit. Um, you know, in the show they based it off of the Hyakarin, the Hyakuri, and it's built by Tewaz. So it's like their new mass production suit, and I guess they uh producing it for multiple people, selling it, but of course Tekadon gets kind of the bulk of them. And uh, I really dig this suit. You know, some people have compared it to kind of a ninja look. And I really, I dig it. And this box art is actually pretty cool. I like how it depicts the, pretty much the first episode when you first see the Sheedan in practice. So you see them fighting each other here. And I think this is actually the Ryusei Go version. You can almost make out the eye and the mouth right there. So that might actually be Shino's version. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the box art and everything like that real quick. Over here we got a little image of Hush Midi, you know, the new character that we're focusing on for some strange reason in this new series. Everybody thinks he's going to be the new, like, Gundam pilot something. But so far, he's only piloted a Sheedon, and he basically worships <laughs> Mikazuki after hating him for so long. So yeah, we don't know where it's going. But they put him on the Sheedon box, yay. Maybe he'll come back later for something else. Let's see here. What else do we got? So we got the IBO logo here. Tiketsu Orphans. HG IBO. The HG144 IO frame Shiden. So it was called the IO frame. That's basically what it is. Or EO. It's either EO or IO. Either way. It's a, it's their new frame. And this is a brand new kit. This thing doesn't use anything from any other suits. And I love it. Alright. Uh, 2016. Made in Japan. It contains a frame. Shiden. Oh yeah. Shut up. Okay, come to the bottom, and we get the rear and front shot. It looks pretty cool. Now, I'm going to talk about this whenever I get to the real review, but uh, that bothers me slightly. Maybe I just did something wrong. But uh, I like how it gives it a good shot of the sheet in here. You can see the weapons with it. You get the great action pose here. I'm swinging his weird bat club thing. Okay, enjoy creating impressive poses by using its whole body structure, right? The gauntlet shield can be attached to the forearm. So that's what's cool. It does actually come with a little forearm shield like that. And then you get the teles telescopic partisan. can be mounted on the backpack. So it's called a partisan, whatever that means. And then, of course, you get add rifle and riot shield are concluded. Or a rifle, I can't read. This giant shield is ridiculous. That is about the most coverage I've ever seen on a shield. It just... It, it just it does. It just does. And this rifle is very, very similar to uh, the other Tewaz weaponry. The opening and closing of the head visor can be re reproduced by removing it and uh, reattaching it. Yeah, that's true. They, they could have had a much better hinge gimmick there, but I guess because they wanted you to be able to replace those, you just kind of pull it out and move it around. Um, you get a shot of the thrusters and or weapon storage there, so you get the thruster on the back. Completed product and image is painted. Some images make sure... Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like, I didn't really need a translation for that, guys. There you get a repeat of the box art, and it's number 25 in the series. A frame sheet in. BandaiHobby.net. Bandai. Also, I didn't talk about it. Look at the great thruster effects. So you get the cool thruster effects on the legs. This looks actually like the chest is glowing, but it's actually the rear thruster back there. But that's kind of an Iron Man look. I just didn't talk about that a minute ago. Sorry. And then, of course, you get the Customize Your Stuff right here with option set 6. It shows off Barbatos using these giant arm rocket launchers, which you haven't seen yet. And, uh, whatever this big gun is. I think that's the one that's for the region lays, but I guess if the Sheedon can use it, why not? Then you get the Bladed Bat, which we also have not seen, but hey, it's a cool looking weapon. You get additional visors for the Sheedon, which I think this is actually supposed to be Orga's visor. But that shows it that shows it as blue, which I'm fairly certain the actual sticker is green. Yeah. And so of course you get option sets down there. Okay. Of course you get the obligatory warnings. Sheedens should not be shoved in a three year old's face. That could hurt them. Uh, plastic bags probably can choke you. Um, all the different plastics, man with the toilet. I don't care if it says poly bag, shush. And it was about twelve hundred yen, so nice, nice cheap kit there. And the illustration is by Koma, and the background image is by Saito Yoshinobu, as usual. And 
camera's up a little bit high. There we go. And uh, even though it's a brand new grunt suit, it still ends up upside down, guys. Yay. I'm still playing with this new tripod, so you'll have to forgive me slightly. There we go. Much better. There we go. And now, let's go ahead and get to the build montage. guys you know we've got the awesome sheet and built and get this is just <laughs> such a good kit something about these brand new ibo kits they they just got it down like with the hugo it's a unique build it uses almost no parts at all that we've ever seen before and the same thing is with the sheet and if i really had a complaint it might be some of the limited mobility or the fact that it's just kind of small I mean, it just, it looks tiny, doesn't it? <laughs> and this thing is supposed to be able to compete with the grazes and everything else. So, but I mean, it, it's a really, really good kit. I mean, I built it essentially in one night. And it just, I really, really dig it. I like this red color, the purplish gray frame. Eh, I'd go either way on it. But I, I dig it. It's got some good panel lines. And it just, it comes with enough to make it not boring. Let's do a quick little walk around here. You can see some of the fun details of it. Now, there's one other complaint I have. It's this weird backpack. It just, it sits so high and it's just kind of awkward. But, it's, I mean, uh, the only complaints I have with this are fairly minor, realistically. But, otherwise, this is actually a fun new kit. And especially a, a nice new grunt suit. Because we don't really have any uh, antagonist, I'm sorry, protagonist grunt suits. In the first season, realistically, all we had for a grunt was the 
Grays. I mean, Man Rudy, maybe, but that that's it. I mean, this this is this is it. And for Tay Waz's mass produced suit, this thing is really really cool. And as we've seen in the show, it can stand its own against well, <laughs> lots of things. We'll just leave it at that. No spoilers. Okay, let's go ahead and take it off the stand. Notice the uh, stand has made a return, just because. And, but this guy does stand really well on his own, despite the feet being just kind of strange. They're just they're little bitty feet, but it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and strip him of his weapons for the time being. I go. Go ahead and pull the hand off. Make my life easy. There is one cool thing. This thing has weapon storage, and you guys know I love me some weapon storage. Let's go ahead and take a close look at some details here. You can see I added a little bit of silver paint up here on the head, just for effect. And there's one of the very, very few stickers. In fact, there's only two. And that's one of the eyes. <laughs> when the visor's closed. And you kind of just slide it out a little bit and pop it open. Almost like a pair of goggles. And there's the other sticker for the main camera. I actually dig that. The nice little triangular uh, kind of camera it's just weird but it's it's really neat this thing has some nice you know molding right in here some nice panel lines same thing here on the shoulders you have little kind of buttons there this nice big centerpiece which i think this is like a Taywaz thing this is just something they seem to put on most of their suits i guess that's where the main cockpit area is now if we're going to talk a couple little details here painted those main hydraulics with a little bit of dark gray and some silver but it does suffer from the fact that they don't go anywhere <laughs> so they just kind of hang out there if you don't have it like really crunched up but yeah it is what it is and uh, instead of using gray on any of the uh, maroon color here i used a brown just to make it a little bit different i do like doing that i like using browns on uh red uh armor and stuff like that it, just, it changes it up just enough but like i said you've got some nice panel lines all over this thing and this kind of offset i don't even know really it's not even like a cream color i don't even know it's almost like a cream with a touch of green i don't i don't even it's just it's a weird weird color but i mean it works on this i, I couldn't see it being like the entire suit or anything like that but for small details especially like the weapon it's okay whoa camera got away from me there all right and then you can see back here on these back of the leg thrusters i added some silver paint honestly it could be better i think i need to switch up my markers uh that one seems to just have some issues no matter how much i shake it it just comes out really strange but after, other than that i really didn't add a whole lot of detail just a couple little silver pieces actually the spots where these plug in i painted silver but you can't even see it so it doesn't really matter and then there's a couple of little dots right in there. So let's go ahead and talk articulation. Like I said, this guy has some good articulation, but it's also limited at the same time. So for the head, of course, you get the little sliding uh, visor gimmick. The head is a standard double joint or double ball joint polycap. But the way this thing is engineered, you can't quite get all the way around. He doesn't have much of a turkey neck at all. He can look up about that far. He can look down actually really well. That's not bad. But it's it's just it's a little too limited by the way they built up the uh, kind of shoulders and clavicle area. But it is what it is. It's a grunt suit. Okay, arms. You do get some uh, captured ball joints like that, and you do get a really nice shrug. Now either the ball joints themselves can move or the actual. Polycaps can flex forward, so you get that nice shoulder shrug forward. I kind of wish they'd given a little more upward mobility, because you can only go up about so far. But then the arms themselves can get up nice. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's as far as it'll go, literally, because it just popped right up. Okay, so that's as far as it can go for a nice little high teacher. Hi. Hi, I'm a student. Okay. And then you do get some flexibility in the shoulder armor with the little thing. I really don't dig how these two pieces come together. It just, it's not great. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. This is a great case for uh, seam lining armor. This is something I didn't do this go around, but if I was gonna do a full painted version, I would definitely do that. 
Now you do get the standard bicep swivel and kind of double jointed elbows, but it's very limited realistically. Oops, the whole shoulder just came apart. Look at that. Completely worked itself out. Look at that. And then that's as far up as the elbow can bend. And you can go all the way around like so. So it is, there's got to be a little bit more in that elbow. Nope, there really isn't. And I guess I was wrong. I thought it was double jointed, but the top part does not move. It fakes like it does. Oh, this little shield can pivot all the way around. And then you get the standard IBO, you know, hands and fist and wrist. It is what it is. This thing does have some great articulation right here in the chest. So you can do a really big ab crunch. This even moves with it. You can even open it up about that far. So he can do all kinds of fun maneuverability. It will not... Well, I guess it will. I didn't think it would. It kind of pushes things out of the way, but you can go all the way around but like i said stuff gets out of the way you do get some little hippie skirts here and it does have holes for mounting things but there's no weapons that this comes with that would go there no idea now this thing does have the weirdest uh crotch flap i think since the hugo which wasn't that long ago really the whole front when i was building it i got confused because the instructions didn't make sense to me because this is not what i was expecting it to do you do get a little bit of stress mark right there. If it'll come on, focus. Why are you not focusing? Okay, there we go. But yeah, there's a little bit of stress mark right there. Just the, I don't really dig how it's constructed. I'm totally honest. Because if you have that pushed in all the way, it actually does not sit properly. It's weird. So, you know, with that, your legs are restricted a little bit. You flop the whole crotch skirt all the way up. You still can't get too much of a front kick. It is what it is. Um, you do get a decent Jean-Claude. If you get these side skirts out of the way, you can actually get it almost perfect. You know, almost perfect splits. Oh, I forgot about this. You've got these random hydraulic bits right down there. On the uh, kind of crotch hip area, painted those silver. Yep, I think that's just pushing out right there. That's why it's causing that stress mark. One thing I really don't dig about having darker colors like this maroon is you do get stress marks really easy. Oh, he does come with these swivel hips, so he can he can shimmy. He got the shimmy shimmy. You do get thigh rotation. You can go pretty much all the way around, and you can see here. The discoloration there just added a little bit of red touch up and just it doesn't quite go well. Another problem with having these maroons, the nub marks, you got to be real careful. So you can see right in there. Yep, they just stand out way, way easy. And I did what I could to cover it up with paint. Doesn't really work that well. Now this leg is totally new. Although it's, it's nothing totally different from anything we've seen. It's just all new construction. It does have a nice... Double jointed knee goes about that far. Sorry, I thought it was getting a little twisted. And you get this cool little reveal underneath. And I added some silver paint just for fun. You do get a little bit of wiggle out of the thrusters back here. It's on a little bitty ball joint. The ankle, I'm honestly scared of these ankles because it's such a small joint. You do get some hinge there. And you do get the ball joint that goes into the foot. Giving you some pivot, like so. You do get a little bit of a toe point, like that. And the ankle armor pivots along with it. The back ankles, or the heel armor, doesn't really do anything. It just is. Now, one thing that bothers me is the way this back, <laughs> the back of the leg is constructed. Structurally, that just seems weak to me. Maybe I'm just crazy. It just After everything else we've built so far, that just, it doesn't seem great. It's there, but I just, I don't know, guys. It's just weird. He does stand pretty good on his own. Oh, I forgot about the backpack. These little bitty thrusters back here can pivot ever so slightly like that. Yay. And like I said, this backpack is weird, just kind of how high it sits. Usually it'll be down just a little bit below the shoulders. But it is what it is. Let's go ahead and talk weapons and gimmicks. And since we're right here on the backside, we'll show off. 
kind of a weapon and gimmick. So you get the, uh, what do they call this thing? Uh, I don't know, I'm calling it a, a, a flat stick. It's a cricket bat, is all it really is. And you do get the clips, like the Gundams and everything else has, for storing weapons, like so. But that's not the only way you can store it. You get this little flip-up peg right here. It's hard to see because it's all the same color. Now that is basically the same shape as everything Teiwaz uses for weapons. And you can peg it right into here. And then sort of close it down just a little bit. So now you get an across-the-butt kind of storage. Looks neat. I guess if you want to go for that look. It's it's really similar to how the, uh, uh, the Hyakuren kept his uh, sword on its back. Okay, now one thing that worries me is just that connection doesn't never seem great and it doesn't exactly fit that hole. It's shaped right, it's just not exactly right. Now the instructions show you can do it with the gun. Now I tried this with mixed results to say the least. I'll try it again on camera. We'll see what happens. Because this is what I'm talking about. That peg is nowhere near the size of that hole. And I can feel it stressing the gun. So you can do it this way, but you can't close it very tightly or else it just pops right off. Now, I do like the gun. You see how easy that came off, though? So this can actually store on any of those weird Teiwaz uh, connections. But the gun is pretty cool. It's very, very similar to the... Uh, Hyakuren weapons. I think uh, Amida Custom had a similar weapon. But I like it. Just added a little bit of silver detail here and there and then panel lined it. It'd probably look good if you ever painted a darker color, but it's a cool little machine gun. And of course, because it is an IBO kit, you just get a straight handle. It goes into the hand, no problem. Now these weird forearm pieces here sort of keep it from sitting flush. So if you pull it up just a little bit, you can get it in there kind of nice. Like so. So, yay for sheathing gun. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, this fun thing does ching, extend like to a ridiculous amount. I like how this looks like it should spin, but, you know, I don't think there is anything like that. I don't even know that it's ever they use it this extended in the series. I know you definitely see it shortened and maybe to about, like, that length... And I like how it's basically a blade on this end for, you know, stabbing in. And then this is just for, you know, whipping people to death, I think. Something. Paddling. Blah. <laughs> I didn't actually mean to hit it. But it's funny that I did. Okay. Turn a little bit here, buddy. I'm going to go ahead and put this on your butt. Like I said, it's cool that it actually has enough weapon storage for the weapons it comes with. Now you do get the enormous riot shield. I just... <laughs> it's a wall. That's, that's all it is. It's a friggin' wall. Look at this thing. I mean, they do give you some nice, you know, molding on the inside. I guess I could have panel lined it. Might still. And you do... Can You can just pop that off. Or on or off. Or whatever. But as long as you got the fist already on it, you're good to go. And it does plug... This plugs into the forearm... Not the shoulder, which seems strange. Like, I would have thought it would have plugged into the shoulder armor or maybe the bicep or something. No, it plugs into the forearm. And actually, you need to plug the hand in first because I'm a dummy. Like, so. Now, I don't mind having both armors or uh, shields on him because I think it looks cool. It's unnecessary, but it looks neat. I like having, if you're going to have just a little bit of armor on this side to hold the gun... Yay. And then you have the giant right shield on this side. And then you get the crotch peg. Get them on a nice little stand here. Now this is kind of a heavy shield, so you gotta you gotta watch how you work with it. You can see here. Do a quick little pose. Like he's shooting at somebody. Actually, the, the bat thingy is in the way now, but that's okay. So, it's a fun kit. It's got some good possibility, and it, it comes with a lot for a kit, its size and uh, price range. So, I definitely suggest getting it. I'm going to get another one because I want to make Orga's 
custom one, and since it's all white for the most part, um, yeah, they're definitely going to have to get a new one and have some delicate repainting. Um, there is also the Shino's Reese Go custom that's coming out in January, I believe. I have it on order, and I hope I get it, um, because it's just cool. It's a different color, and it comes with the Reese Go head and stickers. You know, yay. And if I'm going to get the Floros, I kind of have to have all of the <laughs> Ryusei Go um, kits. So that's it for this IBO kit review, guys. Like I said, go get this. It's cheap. It's an awesome little grunt suit, and it's fun. And, you know, I can see a lot of people probably going to customize this the same way we do Grazes. And I think it's entirely worth it. So... All right, uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Check out all the other IBO reviews, even the old IBO playlist. And I do believe I will be building another IBO display very similar to the way I built the old one. I just have to get some more stands, and then I'll start constructing that for you guys as we go. Because there's a whole lot of kits to get through in this series. <laughs> all right, guys. I'll catch you next time, and remember to always keep on building.